So in this segment, we're going to be talking about post-Brexit funding gap fears for EU-funded trading schemes. So these will be, some things will be like uh, trades, so like carpentry and other things. And, um, you know, getting a carpentry course or an electrician's course in the UK is very expensive, which is something I'll talk about later on in the video. But, um, you know, you can see here that the EU funded so many different projects in in the UK, which the government just simply didn't want to do. So more than 150 EU funded projects delivering skills training in England and Wales are threatened by the UK government's failure to adequately support them after Brexit, university and local government organisations have warned, which is just wild considering that without freedom of movement we lack, um, we lack even more the expertise we needed beforehand. And so the idea that you know, British people can replace uh, formerly EU workers was never going to work and it's going to be even worse now considering that these kind of skills are going to be um, less available because the, gov the government won't put the money up, essentially. Universities UK, which represents 140 universities, said a looming funding gap between the ending of old EU support payments and the introduction of new UK shared prosperity fund would mean many EU supported projects will now stall or stop. We've talked previously about how Cornish towns are fearful of losing the money that they received formerly from the EU. Now there's even more projects and things like that because the EU funding I think ends in 2023 which would probably be the middle of it and the UK one won't kick in till 24, 25 potentially because they haven't actually got it set up yet. It's Michael Gove that's meant to be doing most of this and um, the guy's probably busy doing other things, who knows. Before Brexit there were 245 projects in England and Wales that received a total of £712 million in EU structural funds that would not be fully replaced by UK equivalent until 24-25 according to the UK. Alistair Jarvis, chief executive, said the group had written to Michael Gove, the secretary of levelling up, you know, big Brexiteer fan, he, a big Brexit fan he is, outlining its concerns about the failure to maintain support for the projects and the, imp and the impact it would have on the government's levelling up agenda. Because if the government are, you know, do want to invest more in infrastructure and other projects to help, you know, uh, deprived areas, you need people with skills, builders, plumbers, electricians, engineers, architects, lots and lots of different um, groups of people come together to build infrastructure projects. Quote, the uncertainty around the implementation of the UK Shared Prosperity Fund, especially the timing, seriously threatens many projects in all four nations of the UK, directly supporting local employers, jobs and communities, he said, end quote. And the simple fact is, like, the UK haven't figured this stuff out when it comes to farming. They haven't figured it out when it comes to towns and cities. They haven't figured it out. They haven't planned for this, despite the fact they've had years to do so. They've had since, what, the end, so twenty, the start of 2020 to now. They've had about two years to figure it out. And, you know, these are people who said the money wouldn't actually change. So, realistically, they didn't have to do anything apart from replace the EU structural funds with, you know, essentially their own funds you know, directly from the government rather than going to the EU and back to us via projects and bidding. They could have just replaced the money really easily, just cut and paste, but, you know, I guess Liz Truss isn't on this particular job. The government has announced that 2.6 billion UK shared prosperity fund will be phased in over the next three years. It's committed 400 million this year and it will rise to 700 million in 23-24 and finally 1.5 billion in 24-25. Funds from previous EU scheme for 2014 to 2020 will continue to be paid out until 23. Um, however, the shared prosperity funds, new people and skills funding will not start until 2024. So there's a whole year where they won't receive any funding for these programs, which you can't run a program without money. Like this simple top and bottom of it. Leaving a gap that training uh, providers warn that will mean key staff and programs will be lost. And you can't ask people to, you know, just hang out for a year or come back after a year either. You know, these teachers, if they can't, you know, work in these jobs, if they can't teach uh, people, you know, these trades or whatever, they're going to go and do other things. They're not going to come back after a year. Some might, but most won't. Analysis by the, by New Philanthropy Capital, a think tank, said that with 1 million fewer people in the labour market than before the pandemic, um, the funding gap would hit the least in the least well-off areas. The likely cliff edge in funding of programmes which are helping people to get working again threatens to undermine the government's own levelling up ambition, said Leah Davies, head of policy at NPC. And, you know, the thing is, the government talked big about retraining people, reskilling and all this stuff when they can't even bother to replace what the EU did for us, rather than going further beyond what was there previously. So it's just wild that anyone actually believes this stuff. 
a government that doesn't believe in social projects, why would they invest more money than previously before? Why would they re replace the money that the EU had given us or, you know, allocated to us? It's just ridiculous. Projects at risk include a business support centre at the University of Gloucestershire that helped create 1,200 jobs and, you know, businesses need help, especially in the new, in the, in the co you know, in the post-Brexit era where, you keep telling governments, or sorry, companies to look at emerging markets, look at emerging markets. How are they supposed to do that when there's barely any support to do that? And a programme to apply the University of Manchester's expertise in graphene engineering to more than 200 businesses. Now, I know nothing about graphene engineering, but it sounds like something you'd have to have expertise in. And clearly these 200 businesses needed the universities of the University of Manchester's um, help when it came to certain projects they had. And that money's now gone. You could argue that these businesses should pay for it. Um, but the simple fact is if they don't have enough, then that project's scrapped and you've lost lots of money via businesses as well in tax revenue and also, um, you know, people who may lose their jobs over it. Paul Whipper, application manager at the Graphene Centre, said such projects were essential to government plans for fostering relationships between university and industry. They really help universities realise their ambition and becoming more relevant to local and national uh, and international companies national and international companies and the thing is right like the government keeps saying our oh, industry need to do more well industry teamed up with universities via eu funding and worked together for projects that's gone now isn't it so these industries will no longer work with the universities to um you know fulfill national needs and international needs well done tory government the local government association said the gap would lead to a reduction of capacity and provision and potentially the permanent loss of expertise built up over many years and it urged the government to find a solution and like I said if these teachers leave you know maybe they go back into um, whatever trade profession they've come from you know go back into uh, being electricians or plumbers or wherever you've lost teachers people who educate people and train them how to use um, how to learn these skills essentially Kevin Bentley Oh, yeah, Bentley, chair of the LGA's People and Places Board, said councils relied on EU funding to deliver programmes that were core to the government's own levelling up agenda. So it shows you that even councils are struggling because of this, especially since certain councils that were allocated funding previously may not receive it. You know, if you're a Tory, um, you know, hardline Tory constituency, why would they give you more money when they can give it to a swing constituency and keep seats? You know, why would they do that? This is pork barrel politics. Quote, it's essential that the government ensures there is a smooth, uninterrupted transition from the end of the EU structural funds programme to the UK Shared Prosperity Fund. It looks like there's a year gap in between. The Department of Leveling Up Housing Communities declined to respond to specific questions about the funding gap between the two schemes, which is absolutely shambolic. They didn't even send out their classic non-answer non sort of thing. But the UK Shared Prosperity Fund would ramp up to match EU funding levels of 1.5 billion a year by 2024-25. But there's no answer to whether these this new money will actually replace where the EU money went. Will they replace these um, training schemes? Will they, you know, keep the money in place for these training schemes, or are they just not going to fund them and just fund other things like uh, pet projects for their MPs? Alongside commitments to support, Brit uh, support regional finance funds across the UK via the British Business Bank, this exceeds the UK government's commitment to matching EU structural fund receipts for each nation. I mean, it's it's less, and you notice how it's going. It goes to 24, 25, but that last um, billion there, they don't actually really have to do it because there's going to be an election in 2024. So a new government could come in, you know, maybe Johnson's gone or Johnson has a new chancellor or whatever. Or the chancellor says, actually, do you know what? We've got a fresh mandate now. I don't have to actually give these EU structural funds. You know, I don't have to match them. That's what could happen because, you notice, 24, 25, 24 is an election year. That's when they'll have to put the full money up for the EU structural funds. So you now I can see them just not bothering with a lot of this stuff. They don't believe in more socialism. They genuinely don't. So they don't believe in these sorts of projects. You know, if private industry are going to do something, they're going to do something. If the universities are going to do something, they're going to do something. Why should the government step in? That's their mantra. That's their whole thing. But anyways, look, you know, the UK is struggling without freedom of movement. And um, we've lost so many people with um, expertise in specific fields that would help massively with levelling up. We're not training people in this country for um, to train them to replace the um, f expertise we had in EU workers. And so what you're going to get here is a double whammy of... Um, Things not, you know, jobs being slower, construction work taking far longer, uh, amongst other things. But um, anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.